Welcome to Module 4, Planning and Implementing Identity Governance Strategy. Let's start with the learning objectives. What are we going to learn here? We will first start with Entitlement Management, which is Planning and Implementing Entitlement Management. This is where you learn about catalogs, access packages, managing entitlements, terms of use, and also life cycle of external user accounts in the Azure AD Identity Governance settings. The next chapter is about managing access review. So you learn how to plan, implement and manage them. Learning about licenses, access reviews and recurring access reviews is very important. The next chapter is about privileged access. So we learn planning and implementing privileged access. This is where you will get introduced to privileged identity management. So we learn about that and also about audit history and reporting. Finally, we learn about monitoring and maintaining Azure Active Directory with the help of audit logs, SIM tools, log analytics, Azure Sentinel, and usage of Azure Active Directory workbooks. I hope this will be a good learning experience for you. Again, welcome you to this module 4 of SC300 certification. Thanks for watching. Let's get started. The first chapter in module 4 is about planning and implementing entitlement management. Let me give you an overview of this before we get into the nitty gritties of that. So you know that in organizations, new users will join and external users also join your organization probably as a contractor. And then you start assigning resources to them, assign permissions to them so that they can work on your projects. Over a period of time, it's important for us to understand who has access to what resources and at what level do they have permissions. This chapter is about understanding appropriate access is granted to the users, ensuring that you create reviews for that access and also implementing and managing the terms of use. In the end of this chapter, we learn about the life cycle of external users and that's very critical part of Azure Active Directory identity governance. Let's get started with this. The first topic that we're going to talk about is access packages. Enterprises often face challenges when managing employee access to resources. For example, users may not know what access they should have. And even if they do, they have difficulty locating the right individuals to approve their access. Another point is that even if let's say the users find and receive access to the resource, they may hold on to access longer than it's required for business purposes. Now these problems are compounded for users who need access from other organizations, example external user accounts or from businesses that are part of your supply chain. They could be your business partners as well. Azure Active Directory Entitlement Management can help organizations ensure that everyone has access to the correct directories and that all user access is managed consistently. In continuation of this discussion, what entitled management is, let's understand what can you do with entitlement management? What are the capabilities of entitlement management? First thing is you would be able to delegate to non administrators the ability to create access packages. What is an access package? The access package contains resources that users can request and the delegated access package managers can define policies with rules for which users can request, who must approve their access, and when does that access expire. Another action that you can do is selecting connected organizations whose users can request access. So when a user who is not yet in your directory requests for access, and if that's approved, they are automatically invited to your directory and assigned access. When that expires or when that access expires, if they have no other access package assignments, their B2B account in your directory is automatically removed. Before we dive further into access management, it's important to understand the terminologies used in the entitled management. This would be helpful to understand the documentation in depth and this would also act like a reference point for the rest of the sections in this lesson. The first terminology is access package. Access package is a bundle of resources that a team or a project needs and this is governed with policies. An access package is always contained in a catalog. 
you should create a new access package for a scenario in which users need to request access. What is an access request? Now this is a request to access the resources in an access package. This request typically goes through an approval workflow and if it is approved, the requesting user receives an access package assignment. What is an assignment? An assignment of an access package to a user ensures that the user has all the resource roles of that access package. Access package assignments typically have a time limit before they expire. Let's talk about catalog. A catalog is a container of related resources and access packages. Catalogs are used for delegation so that non-administrators can create their own access package and catalog owners can add resources that they own to a catalog. And because there is a catalog, there is a catalog creator as well. Catalog creator is a collection of users who are authorized to create new catalogs. When a new administrator who is authorized to be a catalog creator creates a new catalog, they automatically become the owner of that catalog. What is a connected organization? A connected organization is an external Azure Active Directory or a domain that you have a relationship with. The users from a connected organization can be specified in a policy as being allowed to request access. And what would be a policy then? A policy is a set of rules that define the access lifecycle. For example, how users get access, who can approve it, how long users have access through that assignment, etc. A policy is linked to an access package. For example, an access package could have two policies, one for employees to request access and a second one for external users to request access. We all know what a resource is. A resource is an asset. For example, an office group, which is a security group. It could also be an application or a SharePoint online site. Well, all of these are resources and we assign permissions to that. What is a resource directory? A directory that has one or more resources to share is a resource directory. So a resource directory may have more than one resource. A resource role is a collection of permissions that are associated with a resource and is defined by a resource. A group has two roles, member and owner. SharePoint sites typically have three roles, but may have additional custom roles as well. As we learn through access packages, we'll be using this terminology and hence it's important to understand them. Entitlement management introduces to Azure Active Directory the concept of access package. What is an access package? We learned from the previous video that an access package is a bundle of all the resources with the access a user needs to work on a project or perform their task. Access packages are used to govern access for your internal employees and users as well who are outside your organization. You can manage user access to several resources with entitled management and they could be the members of Azure AD security groups or it could be membership of Microsoft 365 groups and teams, assignment to Azure Active Directory enterprise applications including SaaS applications and custom integrated applications that support federation or single sign-on and even user provisioning. Also membership of SharePoint online sites is supported. You can also control access to other resources that rely upon Azure Active Directory security groups or Microsoft 365 groups. For example, you can provide licenses for Microsoft 365 by using an Azure Active Directory group in an access package and configuring group-based licensing for that group. Access to manage Azure resources by using an Azure Active Directory security group in an access package and thereafter creating an Azure role assignment to that group is also supported. You can also provide access to manage Azure Active Directory roles by using groups assignable to Azure AD roles in an access package and thereafter you will assign an Azure Active Directory role to that group. As you see, you can use different kinds of resources with access packages. It could be Azure Active Directory security groups or even Microsoft 365 groups and it could be Teams groups as well. With an access package, an administrator can list down the resources and the roles the user needs for those resources. And when I say resources, it could be groups, applications or even SharePoint sites. 
access package includes couple of policies. It can include one or more policies. A policy is something that defines the rules or guardrails for assignment to access package. Each policy can be used to ensure that only the appropriate users are able to request access, that there are approvers for their request, and that their access to those resources is time limited and will expire if not renewed. Within each policy, an administrator defines the existing set of users who are eligible to request access. Within that policy, you can also have the process to approve or deny access and also the duration of user's access can be defined inside the policy by the administrator. When should I use access packages? Access packages do not replace other mechanisms for access assignment. These two are different things. The access packages are most appropriate in situations when employees need time limited access for a particular task. Let's understand with this an example. Let's say you might use group based licensing and also a dynamic group to ensure all employees have an exchange online mailbox and then you can use access packages for situations in which employees need additional access like reading departmental resources from another department. Another situation may be when the access that's required needs the approval of an employee's manager or other designated individuals. Also in situations when there is a particular department that wishes to manage their own access policies for their resources without contacting IT. Another situation could be when two or more organizations are collaborating on a project and as a result of that, multiple users from one organization will need to be brought in via Azure AD B2B to access other organizations resources. Let us now take a look at this picture. On the left hand side, you will see that there are multiple users, there are groups, there are requesters as well, and then there is an admin. On the right hand side, there is an external directory for which you want to do a B2B policy. Azure AD B2B, a business to business, supports adding external users and providing access to your internal resources. And for that purpose, in the middle, you got Access Package Manager. Let's say you created an access package called as Access Package 1 which is there in the middle of the screen here. And there is only one single group as a resource. Access is defined with a policy that will enable a set of users in that directory to request access. Then there is access package two, and this also includes a group. It includes an application, also includes a SharePoint site, which includes SharePoint online resources. And then access is defined with two different policies, right? So there's the internal user policy and then there's an external user policy. The first policy enables a set of users in the directory to request access. So there's a requester three requesting for access. And the second policy is allowing users from an external directory to request access, right? So I hope this helps us understand what an entitlement manager is and where access package manager comes into play. The next lesson is about planning, implementing, and managing access reviews. What are we going to learn here? You'll learn about planning access reviews, creating access reviews for groups and applications, monitoring your findings in access reviews, and also managing licenses for access reviews. Towards the end, we'll take a look at how do you automate access reviews management tasks and configuring recurring access reviews. In your organization, once an identity is deployed or created, it's paramount that you have proper governance procedures and that's what Access Reviews does in order to provide a secure solution. Let's go ahead and learn more about this governance practice in identity protection. It's very important to plan the Access Reviews. Consider your organization needs to determine the strategy for deploying Access Reviews in your environment. First thing that you will do is to engage the right stakeholders. When technology projects fail, they typically do so due to mismatched expectations on impact, outcomes and responsibilities. In order to avoid these pitfalls, you need to ensure that you're engaging the right stakeholders and that the project roles are clear. For access reviews, you will likely include representatives from different teams 
including IT administration. IT administration is a department that manages your IT infrastructure and also administers your cloud investments and software as a service applications. You also need to include the development teams who are building and maintaining applications for your organization. How about business units that are maintaining the projects and their own applications? Finally, the corporate governance team that is ensuring that the organization is following internal policies and complying with regulations. It's important to note that for reviews requiring manual evaluations, we need to have a plan in place so that there are adequate reviewers and review cycles that are meeting your policy and compliance needs. If review cycles are too frequent or there are too few reviewers at that time, then quality may be lost and too many people or too few people may then have access. So what is the feature in Azure that is providing the access review service? This is called as Azure Active Directory Identity Governance. So the access reviews are provided by Azure AD Identity Governance and we're going to talk about that in the upcoming lesson. Thanks for watching so far. I'll see you there.